definitely wanted to make sure to touch on this before we got up out of here, man. Kendrick Lamar. So Kendrick Lamar recently heard me talk about it at the beginning of the podcast uh, was on the uh, Metro Boomin and uh, Future album, We Don't Trust You. And there was a track on there featuring uh, Kendrick Lamar, and he took some shots on at uh, Drake, rather. And now, obviously, with bated breath, we're all waiting for Drake's response. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically, actually, if there's any kind of timetable on Drake's response. I've heard that discussed quite a bit, and I thought people's opinion on that was kind of interesting. And um, uh, just, yeah, I mean, if what you kind of expect from Drake, Drake in general. So, yeah, timetable and just kind of like what you expect from this. Well, I mean, timetable, I mean, if we're given one, it's kind of up now, right? I mean, that album came out last week. So yeah. it's been yeah. a week. I mean, that's where, uh, how long do you need to write something up in mm-hmm. response? I mean, uh, you know, the, the GOAT of it, the best, you know, diss rapper and responder of all time, you know, we'll give it to, to M. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I mean, I mean, he, he really gives you like a 24-hour notice. Like, it's like, all right, all right, you said some shit, I heard it, and out comes a fucking diss tomorrow. Well, he so, didn't, I don't know, but he sometimes doesn't respond. No, yeah, sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean, the one he waited, I think, for an entire album. So, has he responded to Benzino again yet? I think he I might have. He, has he? I think he might have. I think you need like, to see that. Yeah, there was, was like a uh, not I like forgot a, about Benzino. I, 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 I forgot he even pulled that shit. I don't even think it was the whole. I don't think it was the whole track, bullshit. but I think it was like his. Uh, well, at least your time, man. Yeah, he He's just like bum. mentioned, like you know, sits and bars his way. But um, with this Kendrick Lamar, I mean, this isn't the first time. If you guys are familiar with Control, where he kind of like. I, I don't know if you'd say playfully, but he said a lot of people's names. And in rap, it is so competitive. And that's why I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, I love this. Yes, um, it reminds me it. of that kind of political, I'm not political, I'm sorry, the uh, competitive kind of spirit in hip hop um, with, with even your peers, people that you um, are friends with. I mean, if you listen to like some of like Wu-Tang Clan stories and shit like that, I mean, they would be rapping with their best friends yeah. and saying they want to fucking eat like Bro, tear their head off. The, um, the, the uh, MJ to Prince comment was 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 dope where, where gotcha. he said Prince outlived MJ. Yeah. And that's not the Drake, obviously. Yeah. Because of uh, the record sales. But the... Yeah. Uh, um that's an interesting by the way compare like he's i think that's supposed to be really telling because it drake is considered like in that kind of conversation with michael jackson yep and rightfully so because of the hits and things like that um so kendrick does an interesting thing here because then he's kind of putting himself in like that equating himself where, where to, people to think prince. prince is better yeah so but michael jackson had th- more hits thinks is more talented and things like right. that so yeah like when you consider their careers overall it's not a comparison i've heard anybody make about no. uh kendrick so it, i think it it's interesting, interesting for him good. to introduce that as like yeah um well drake has to respond before j cold right so so yeah well i mean because he does kind of uh he, you know he, diss he, j cole a little he bit says too about like fuck the big three don't he yeah, basically, he's just like it's it's just me it's or just whatever. Me. The big so just me. yeah, I think that uh you know that's definitely a shot at J Cole, but it is much more personal with Drake. That's why the J J Cole I added his name after the fact because there's this, and then if you're a fan of these two guys, then I'm sure you've caught just subliminal disses going back and forth in their music before. That's why I was, that's why I said with Control and. This is more subliminal, but with control, what was so special with it about the time is even with how competitive hip hop is, where there's real animosity, a lot of times they people won't want to shed any light on the person that they're right. dissing. So, and Drake does this a lot, um, where he won't diss people directly, but he'll, you know, have whole songs where they're like with the Kanye diss, um, where the whole song is him basically talking about, him, but he literally never ever says his name. Oh. Um, yeah, <clears throat> so is there a a deeper history with with Drake and and Kendrick. Like, is this, is this real? Like, like, like real beef for Kendrick? <clears throat> yeah, I think. Um, so, like I said, with hip hop being so like, competitive like, like, I don't and get things the, like the real that, big history on on why I, they would be beefing. Oh well, one thing, I don't know. You know, it's tough to say because a lot of this stuff I think is not for the public public consumption. So there's things that happen behind the scenes that mm. we're not aware of. True I that. did watch like this. Uh, interview that Drake was doing where they were talking about um, uh, Drake. I don't know if you're familiar with Drake's album, Take Care, but on that, he has a song where um, uh, it's called Buried Alive, I think, and Kendrick Lamar's on it. And this is 
one of the things that really propelled Kendrick Lamar to like really popular acclaim. Like before that, people loved his mixtapes and shit, but he was doing mixtapes. Right. So yeah. um uh, so he kind of co-signed him in a way. So this was a little bit after that interview. At, I mean, after they did that track together in Good Kid, Bad City had came out. I don't know if any other albums had come out, but this was an interview with Drake. And I'm kind of paraphrasing, but this was essentially what he said. He told the interview, he's basically like, and even like there's somebody in the crowd that says like Kendrick Lamar. And he's like laughing. He's like, oh, this person said Kendrick Lamar. He's like, that's the only person in here that'll say that. Like really kind of like. Oh, yeah. Little guy in him. And he's like, you know, Kendrick's a great lyricist, but we have to see him release more albums, you know, like basically saying like, hey, I'm on a different level. When I go into an out, when I go into an album, I'm looking at how do I make hits? How do I make timeless records? He's like, is anybody listening to whatever the fuck? Um so yeah, like shit like that. I could see things like that okay. happening. Yep, and that where, would piss me and off. Where <laughs> us, us from a public standpoint, we don't we're not privy to that. But then he'll that's something that like I said, if that happened to you. You would probably remember that forever, obviously. Fuck yeah, so that, he's that taking some note like, of that. Fuck you. Yeah, he's taking some <laughs> note of that. And then now that he has worked himself into a position where he's in that conversation, I think it's even more like, you know, poking the bear, like, haha, I'm here, motherfucker. So now you got to well, deal with me. Yeah, watch out. Because Kendrick's a real lyricist. So. Well, and Kendrick dissed him on the uh, BET uh, cipher that they did with whereas TDE. I don't know if you remember that, but he had some line where he's talking about that he was tucking a sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes and shit uh, and that was supposed to be at drake so oh, there's like like i said there's this subliminal kind of thing and um now i mean i think what people are hopeful is that this kind of it's almost like there's a cold war happening in a little way you know what i mean like it's like, like it. and somebody's excited because now you've Kendrick has has put some kind of timeline on it where it's like okay now it's out in the public it's out in open you know i've called you out on the public stage we need to see something so rather than it be whenever we get something from drake and there's going to be some kind of subliminal fuck you now it puts the onus on drake like no we need to really see an outright response uh, uh, people are actually already looking at he has like a feature with on the uh bfb pac-man fucking i don't know if you know if you know who he is i don't listen to his shit like that but i've seen him on the internet um so, uh, pac-man jones I don't know. He, he, he I don't has know. a song out called SOB, Stand on Business. No, no, no. This is uh, oh. some other guy. Um, oh, okay. But he... Um, it's actually decent. Yeah, he... So, But this guy has a song with Drake on his album, and people are already saying, like, oh, is this going to be his response? Um, I'm gonna actually want to... I'm going to read these comments, but then I want to get your uh, opinion on uh, some of the stuff that I've seen as far as people talking about what we're talking about. Um, it's the fans that instigate the shit. Um, that's definitely true. Um but you can't deny, like, I didn't grab the, the I should have actually grabbed that video that I watched of Drake talking, but it, it was some, like, nasty, yeah, like, he's a little, little bro in you, basically. Um, and I can understand somebody taking that a little system, and then now it's at the point where you are in outright competition with one another. Actually, such a good analogy, uh, it really is a Cold War. Yeah, 100%. Um, I appreciate that, too, by the way. Um, but yeah, there is this kind of like shit talking back and forth, you know, daring a motherfucker to do something um, and really put it on the line. And then now you have this kind of like inciting incident, incident that makes it a hot war. And now we're we're in it. Uh, now nah, you really um, encapsulated it. <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, it's bigger than the fans. Yeah, no, for sure. This is and it's, a, you know, it's rare that we really get the they really almost never get an opportunity to see no. people that you would say. It's hard to argue Old that these are not style like fucking beef. Well, no, and I'm saying like these are the like two. This is like Notorious right. B.I.G. and Tupac, right? You know, and there's very as as there's no ending, of course, message. of course. But and there's no, uh, there's not a ton of um, uh, parallels to that. Like a lot of times when we see people diss, there are people that are at their career that they actually. Like Ja Rule and uh, uh, Fifty Cent, M50, they were on their come Fat up. Joe, all yeah, them, yeah. They're on their come up. They actually stand something to gain by this uh, interaction. In like Drake, for example, why he says, and he even has a line where he says, basically, like "diss me, you won't hear a word of it" or some shit like that. Um, he doesn't really stand anything from gain. He only brings a bigger platform to whoever is dissing him. So it really isn't his best interest. But when it when you're in a hip hop and also you're talking about Kendrick Lamar, now you kind of got to say something for real. You know well, what I mean? Now because he 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 can talk to you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. really, when Meek yeah, Mill buddy. when Meek Mill yeah. said what he said about it's like he didn't have to respond really to Meek Mill. He didn't really respond to uh, push a T like that. Although I think he did have one diss track that people are like. Eh. Um, but it didn't have the same energy that even it did with Meek Mill. But he didn't have to respond to that because Meek Mill really didn't have any business talking to him like that. No, no, Kendrick yeah. and, and Kendrick can put words to paper. 
Oh, he's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, 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 I do like I, I like it for for rap in itself. Yeah. Like I, it's it's almost like a real life, like in life, real time versus. Keep it rap. Keep it you no know, through tracks. Fucking have it go back to back to back for a little bit. Give rap fans some great rap yeah. for a little bit. Some some kind of you know well and just draw attention to the art form and what's yes. special about it on the biggest most popular stage. So a lot of times, you know, us as hip hop fans, this beef shit. Almost everybody I know that really, if you really really love hip hop, you and you're around my age, then you watch those fucking like beef documentaries and shit. <laughs> yeah. oh like that's what created God. the lore around it. Even past that, past past yes. past beef. Um, you had kids that that are younger than us that were watching like the uh shy rack shit and the stuff going on in um Chicago and DJ Academics reporting on it. This rapper killed this rapper, da 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 da. So there's that lore, this kind of like in hip hop, it's like a there's such a um Best it's friend, such a but. masculine bravado kind of thing where it's like when you see people step up to one another, that's really like and that's part of like where it was even born from as far as like freestyle rapping. You really get to the essence of it. Um, and with with the fucking Kendrick Lamar and, and, and Drake, for that matter, um, it's just so exciting to see, like I said, the biggest artists in that genre putting it on the table. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like. Taylor Swift and fucking Beyonce, you know what I mean? Like what, what beefing beef. in their That's genre, real beef, beefing though. in their genre. However else, how, Yo, Beyonce however they country. do that, however they do that. Yeah, she, no, she said exactly. She, she, she didn't she, want no she, problems she, with. She, no, no, oh, she, actually, she said. Yeah, she she said, Taylor, through, you came to my genre. I'm coming to yours. I'm gonna bitch. go to yours. And yeah. then somehow won Innovator of the Year, which was hilarious. It was hilarious. Yeah. The album was trash. By the way, Flu said, uh, "Push it in my mind." Gave Drake the business. I agree with that, but. The thing is, this is the caveat I'll put with that. I don't believe that Drake was ever really like fully. Um, yeah, Gucci and Jeezy. Yeah, he wasn't fully committed to getting into that beef, at least from a lyric standpoint. Now, part of that, I think, is based off what I talked about before, which is Drake doesn't want to give Pusha T his platform. Probably really, really doesn't like Pusha T because you're right. Pusha T did give him the business and was vicious. That's why there's a complete different vibe with Pusha T's this. He is vicious. He's saying and with also like really good disses. It's amazing because you just hear it's like such a counterculture thing. You're hearing people say shit to hurt people's feelings in like a fun way. You know what I mean? Like pushers literally like yes. you're hiding your kid and you're ashamed of them. <laughs> like, Bro. The you know I mean? And Drake, speaking of Drake, when he was going crazy and he was going on uh and he was on Meek Mill's head. I think he bodied Meek Mill, which is crazy because Meek Mill's a fucking battle rapper. When he went on his head, he's like, bro, you're literally riding the coattails of your fucking woman. You look crazy right now. I mean, he bro, actually that probably was, that was he, hilarious. He probably pulled punches a little bit because he probably knew some of the Diddy shit. He could have been like, Diddy fucked you. Bro, and and that's and, restraint. We and, talked about and that. He, and he had a relationship with Nikki. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. he's trying to well, like, and even not Nikki, kill her husband. And bro. even Nikki. I don't have any of these videos. These are just videos I've I've seen off the internet. Bro, I had a video but there's to a show video you. I forgot. There's a video of Nikki, like she's talking to the streamer, I think, and they get on into like a conversation. And she's like, Oh, you know those industry motherfuckers be fucking each other and shit. Mm. And then he's like, Whoa, really? And he's and she's just like, mm. Bro, Diddy came like, out. Okay, Diddy, who are you talking about? Diddy, Diddy was just in an interview recently where he was talking about how. Oh, he's like, bro, eyes real big. He's like, he's like, now there's fucking all over the industry. There's just fucking everywhere. And it's like, bro, that's a wild time. That man's just yeah. gonna come out. He was nah, flashback. Did, did you see? Speaking of like, like dissing people's like kid, like, did you see Charleston White shit at Gilly? Oh yeah, I did see that. I did see that. That was crazy. Yeah, he's like saying, "Oh, I'm gonna call my son." Yeah. yeah. Here, I, I, we can talk about that. No, but let's just finish this up. Uh, that was, was fucked up though. Up no, you're right. That was super fucked up. That's a different level of beef. Uh. Uh, so we got flu shikes. He said 50 and Jada, uh, Gucci and Jeezy. Yeah, Gucci the Gucci and Jeezy. and Jeezy shit. That probably is like part of what made me like Jeezy was my favorite rapper. That probably had a huge part of that. I was like, oh, it was created a, a like I said, it creates a <laughs> lore behind these people, it makes them bigger than fucking bigger than life, you know, makes their their life seem like a movie. Now, to a certain extent, I'm sure that dehumanizes these people to some people, and that's why. Some people are, who are hip hop fans will rob fucking rappers like crazy, like Los Angeles. Pop but rest rest in peace, damn, got killed by fucking kids, which is crazy. Yeah, I ran up his fucking place. Uh, but yeah, the fifty and Jada, fucking Jada kiss Savage, fifty Savage. But that's another scenario where they're going back and forth, and um, you know, Jada probably at that point had more to gain from that. Fifty's a different case. Fifty's different. Bro, 50, uh, 